Why do we not like talking about our budget in churches? Why has our operating budget taken such a hit this year when there have been plenty of ministries going on in this church? There was a movie that came out in 2000 called Pay It Forward. The movie is about a teacher named Eugene Simonette who gives an assignment to his class and then a boy, Trevor McKinney, in his class who answers it. Mr. Simonette gives this assignment. Think of an idea to change our world and put it into action. The students have all year to work on it and it's for extra credit. Even though it's for extra credit, the students aren't happy about this assignment. The answers he gets from the students are, it's like so weird, crazy, hard, bummer. And then he says, how about possible? The realm of possibility exists where? In each of you, here and here. The words given by the students to describe the assignment are some of the words that cross each of our minds when we think of the operating budget. Weird, crazy, hard, bummer. Recently, these words have really described our giving. It was weird that we were $30,000 in the red. It was crazy and hard to think how we were going to make it up. And it was a real bummer to the life of the church. I want to return to one of my previous questions. Why has our operating budget taken such a hit this year when there have been plenty of great ministry opportunities that have happened within our church community? We partner with Trinity Presbyterian and packed over 750 backpacks this year for the Backpack Bash. And for the first time ever, we didn't turn away anybody that needed a backpack. Early this year, we finished up a great upward season that saw hundreds of people come into our gym and receive testimonies and Bible lessons through team devotions and halftime devotions. And we're now starting a new upward season in hope for the same. We've had the opportunity to, for the past few years to host the Shepherd Center in our building that serves hundreds of senior adults four times a year. We had VBS this summer, youth lock-ins and movie nights, ABW circles and small groups, living and active, our young adult ministry, two different parenting courses. We have a great community of believers that love each other and come together to further the kingdom of God in our world and especially in our community. All of these things happen throughout the year are easy to support and give to because these things are sexy. The operating budget is not sexy. Now I know some of you may have been a little nervous by the title, It's Not Sexy. And I've spent the first part of my sermon without mentioning this word. But let me define the word in the way I intend to use it. Sexy can mean exciting, appealing, glamorous, trendy, interesting, and neat. Mission giving, VBS, musical instruments, and outreach projects are exciting and appealing things to give to because we can see what we are giving to right away. As Corey mentioned in the From the Bottom Up video that you received, this comes from our vending machine culture. You put something in and immediately get something out of it. These projects make us feel good and are good for the soul and the life of the church. The operating budget is just not exciting or sexy. It includes the electric bill, telephone and internet, mortgage, insurance for the building, staff salaries and benefits, tuning of pianos and strings for guitars, choral anthems, paper towels, soap, and toilet paper. There is nothing sexy about toilet paper. 
if we do not join together and give, the operating, give to the operating budget, then things start to disappear. Then things really get interesting. Tony Campolo tells of, of being invited to speak at a ladies' meeting. There are 300 women there. Before he spoke, the president of the organization read a letter from a missionary. It was a moving letter. In the letter, the missionary expressed a need for $4,000 to take care of an emergency that had cropped up. So the president of the organization said, we need to pray that God will provide the resources to meet the need of this missionary. Brother Campolo, will you please pray for us? Tony Campolo, who is very outspoken, and every time I've spoken with him, he speaks what's on his mind. He says, no. Startled, the president said, I beg your pardon? And he said, no, I won't pray for that. He then went on, I believe that God has already provided the resources and that we, all we need to do is give. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to step up to this table and give every bit of cash I have in my pocket. And if all of you will do the same thing, I think God has, uh, has already provided the resources. The president of the organization chuckled a little bit and said, well, I guess we get the point. He's trying to teach us that we need to give sacrificially. Tony says, no, that is not what I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach you that God has provided for the, this missionary. All we have to do is give it. Here, I'm going to put down all the money I have with me. He later wrote, I only had about $15 in my pocket, so I wasn't too worried about it. So he put down those, that $15 and then looked at the president of the organization. Reluctantly, she opened her purse and took out all the money she had, which was about $40, and put it on the table. One by one, the rest of the ladies filed by and put their money on the table. When the money was counted, they had collected more than $4,000. Tony Campolo said, now here's the lesson. God always supplies for our needs, and he supplied for this missionary too. The only problem was we were keeping it for ourselves. Now let's pray and thank God for his provision. We have been provided for by God. Shouldn't we want to give a little bit back to God from the provisions he's given us? What puts us in crisis mode when, when it comes to the budget is the irregular giving that happens throughout the year. To help our church not be in crisis mode, we need to become more consistent givers. A farmer one day went happily and went with great joy in his heart to report to his wife and family that their best cow had given birth to twin calves, one red and one white. And he said, you know, I have, sudden, I have suddenly had a feeling and impulse that we must dedicate one of these calves to the Lord. We will bring them up together, and when the time comes, we will sell one and keep the proceeds. And then we will sell the other and give the proceeds to the Lord's work. His wife asked him which one was going to be dedicated to the Lord. The man said, there's no need to bother about that now. We will treat them both in the same way. And when the time comes, we will do as I say. And off he went. In a few months, the man re-entered the kitchen looking very miserable and unhappy. When his wife asked him what was troubling him, he answered, I have bad news to give you. The Lord's calf is dead. Then she said, but you had not decided which one the Lord's calf, which one was going to be the Lord's calf. Oh yes, I did. I had always decided it was going to be the white one, and it's the white one that has died. The Lord's calf has dead, or is dead. It is always the it is always God's calf that dies. When money becomes difficult, the first thing we economize is 
our contribution to God's work. There's this great, this, there's this great quote from one of your fam- fellow members in the From the Bottom Up video that I want to share. It is great to give back because most people have more than they need. I feel that you can always find a way to give up a little something. Even though you may want the bigger and better thing, in the end, giving back to God is more important than those things. Billy Graham once stated, a checkbook is a theological document. It will tell you who and what you worship and what you believe. Do you believe in the work of God? Do you believe in this church family? Well, what if you're not in the routine of giving? It takes discipline. You have to consistently work on it. This is a discipline that I am working on. My parents taught me from an early age when I was growing up to tithe. At first, William, my brother, and I would receive ten dimes. Not a dollar, but ten dimes. And the first thing we, we w- would do is we would take the one dime and put it in our pocket and take it to church and put the other nine in an envelope. Somewhere through college and graduate school, I got out of the rhythm. But I've been working on getting back into that rhythm of giving to the church before any bills and fun things are paid for, like movies, like most of y'all know that I like. If you were just starting out trying to get back in, or get into the habit of giving, or trying to get back into the habit of giving, you're not alone. I'm getting into this habit myself. So let's join in this discipline together and work on this. I understand debts, uh, debt and bills are tough. I'm not removed from these things just because I am a pastor or I am young. We have to work on it because it's not easy. The goal should be where it becomes second nature. But it isn't always something you can just start doing without a clear decision to make giving from the bottom up a priority. I am disciplining myself to become a consistent tither and giver to the church. There have been times where I have forgotten, but the good thing about discipline is that you have to consistently work on it. And disciplines are not easy. So let's join together and help provide the budget need of this church as a community of believer so that the sexy, exciting, glamorous, trendy, appealing ministries can continue and we can do more, to, more together in ministry.